So here we see the classification of diseases, primarily the diseases that they are classified based on the duration. So here is the classification of diseases based on their duration, how much time they will stay in our bodies. The first one is acute diseases. Acute diseases are for a very short duration, but they will be very severe and for a short duration like cough, seasonal cough and cold. These are because of some kind of infection, might be because of some kind of infections. And when there is a seasonal change, when the water is polluted, you may get certain cough and cold for some time. And for some three days, four days, you suffer from the cold and again you get recovered. And that is called as an acute disease. So acute diseases, they cause some discomfort on a temporary basis. In the previous uh, part, we discussed that in the beginning part, we discussed that when particular part of a body is disturbed, that part will disturb the system, the system will disturb the whole body. But in this case, there is no that much of time. An acute disease will happen for a short time, short time, say some three days to seven days, one week. In this one week of time, it cannot disturb your whole body, your whole health. Only that particular part is disturbed, you take some medicines or you take some rest, you get recovered. Overall, your health is not spoiled because of the acute diseases. And there are good chances when you are healthy. Uh, normally, when you are healthy, if you get an acute disease, you, if your immunity is good, you will recover quick without any medicines even. And of course, if you take the medicines in a very short span of time, you get recovered. And because of this acute disease, your other systems are not very much affected. But whereas you see the chronic diseases. So what are the examples of acute diseases, cold, cough, these are the acute diseases. If you see the chronic diseases, chronic diseases are for a very long duration of time, very long duration. You will be suffering from the disease for a very long duration. You cannot recover them, recover from them in a short span like some three to one week. It will take one month, two month. It will take years also, more than six months, one year, two year. You take tuberculosis, certain type of cancers. So you need months and months of treatment at the same time good food, at the same time good living condition, at the same time good bed rest. If you take everything then you will be recovered. Moreover, you see if a person is suffering from a chronic disease, it will affect his whole body. See, for example, a person is suffering from tuberculosis. Tuberculosis affects the lungs. He is getting so much of cough. So what it makes? It creates a discomfort. He falls short of breath, not able to breathe properly. He loses his body weight. He becomes pale, thin. Body weight is lost. So this is a permanent effect on the whole body. His immunity gets spoiled. He prone to uh, gets become prone to other diseases also when he is not able to. So likewise, the total body is disturbed because of this particular chronic disease, cancers, they affect other systems. So when there is a chronic disease for a person, this chronic disease, not only that particular system, it will affect the whole body and it will have long term effects on other body parts also. It means the chronic diseases will affect the overall health of a person. So the chronic disease leads to poor health conditions, poor health condition. Already we discussed what is poor health. Of course, the person is not having any particular disease. He will not be able to perform at his fullest level. So that is a poor health. So the chronic diseases leads to poor health. So diagnosis of chronic diseases and treatment of chronic diseases is very important. And for an acute disease, you can easily get recovered by medicines. For chronic disease, not only the medicines, not only the medicines help the person, he needs proper rest, nutritious diet, healthy living conditions, proper hygiene and everything is there, then only he can recover from the disease, chronic disease. Even though he recover from the chronic disease, whatever the loss or damage happened to the whole body and whole health, it needs a lot of time to recover and to become completely, get the status of real health. So causes of disease, what are the causes of disease? How a disease is caused? Somebody is complained by uh, some disease. Someone has got cholera. 
someone has got diarrhea so when you tell about that yes he might be infected by the organisms microorganisms which cause the disease so the microorganisms have entered his body he got the disease that is the reason we find out means here first we look at the disease causing agent he got the disease because of so and so microbes he got the disease because he drank the polluted water because he drank that he ate the roadside food outside foods which are contaminated so by that we will finalize that he got the disease but what are the other factors that cause the disease two friends they have eaten the food on the roadside food sold they ate some noodles a pav bhaji something they eat on the roadside stall which is not in a very unhealthy untidy conditions the stall is just beside the garbage bin both the friends ate the chart so in this both the friends in uh, in two of them one got loose motions diarrhea on the next day the other is okay so both the friends did not wash their hands before eating just when they are going from tuition to home on the way they ate the chart but only one was affected if you think the reason for the disease is causing agent exclusively the causing agent both of them should get the disease because both of them ate the food from the same source the contaminated source and both of them did not wash their hands then what is the difference why they did not get why the other person didn't get the disease only one person got the disease so let us look at the other factor that is immunity so disease is not only caused by the microorganism of course some people if the microorganisms enter their body also they are not affected by disease it depends upon the level of immunity the natural defense mechanism of our body the natural strength that we have in our body it decides whether you get the disease or not microbes entered the body of the two friends a and b he got disease he is healthy microbes entered the body of a and b but b is having good immunity his cells kill the microorganisms he has got good defense mechanism a is not having good defense mechanisms his immunity is weak microbes they grow they have grown up and caused the disease for a so immunity is the second factor which will decide whether a person will be affected by a disease or not so will be wondered so most of you are washing your hands with a hand sanitizer hand wash hand wash liquid you are using or either you are using a soap to clean your hands sometimes you see some people they they are not washing their hands and eating the food even though they are not affected at some times because it depends upon the immunity the strength in the body so next thing is nourishment good nutrition good poor which nutrition you take it will decide your immunity so that the immunity is based on good nourishment if you are eating a healthy food which contain all the vitamins and minerals and all your cells will be having enough strength to combat with the microorganisms you are not eating a good food here good nutrition in the sense not rich food there are certain foods which are very costly you order a pizza you get it for cost of 200 300 so you are spending 200 to 300 rupees on a pizza but how nutritious it is of course it is delicious it may be delicious but how nutritious it is it contains lot of maida the flour which is not at all having the nutrients very less fiber fiberless food it is you are eating which is not at all good for the health if you buy with some 10 rupees some green leafy vegetable which you get it for some 10 rupees or 5 rupees either palak or any other green leafy vegetable and you make a dish out of that it will be more and more and more nutritious contains more amount of minerals and vitamins compared to the one which you are eating for a cost of 300 rupees so here the money is not the matter the choice matters so people who are eating the good nutritious food surely they will have good immunity they will have good resistance power to the microorganisms so by that they have a good health 
so the nourishment also it decides but sometimes here the economic condition so we are not very much specific to this economic condition as already i told you there are certain foods which are very cheap they have good nutrition but people are not aware of uh, awareness is lacking in the people awareness and sometimes they cannot provide good nutrition to the children in some cases they cannot they cannot provide even the green leafy vegetables also to the certain children in very poor conditions they will be giving only the rice gruel starch or only roti without any vegetables so it doesn't provide all the nutrients very poor conditions and a lack of awareness about the nutrition some people think kaju is far better than groundnut groundnut is cheap kaju is better but nutritionally groundnut is more nutritious than kaju than cashew nut so we must aware of that the proteins present in that groundnut are good more healthy compared to the cashew nut so but people think that cashew is costly so obviously it is very healthy food so we cannot eat these nuts these peanuts but peanuts they are healthy as i told you green leafy vegetables are very cheap but they are very nutritious so this way we must be aware of which foods are good so good nourishment it will help to get rid of the diseases poor nourishment lack of nourishment leads to disease so that is the another cause of disease and one more thing is genetical genetical abnorm abnormalities certain abnormalities in their genes make the people to get prone to many diseases the genes itself decide that they have a poor immunity so they are prone to diseases sometimes certain diseases are caused by genetical problems by birth they will have some defects which are caused by genes which do not most of the cases which do not have any cure for that poverty is another cause of disease poverty means less income when they have less income they cannot afford what they cannot afford they cannot afford good food good food good lifestyle good place of living if they have a low income they cannot afford to take a house in good locality healthy locality they take houses in the slums which are filthy areas which are unclean untidy so poverty is one reason which makes them live in unclean unclean places they cannot have a good lifestyle they cannot have good food so they cannot maintain the hygiene and uh, all the things with their uh, low economic standards which may lead leads to diseases so poverty is also the other reason so these are all the causes so disease causing agent microorganisms is the first thing immunity nourishment lack of nourishment genetical problems and poverty these are the different causes of disease primarily so we are going to discuss about each of them in detail if you like this video please give a thumbs up please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on cbse syllabus